This is Eric from Pack Hacker, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Night Ash Runoff Waterproof Travel Pouch, which I've been testing for the past two weeks. Let's dive in. So just kicking things off with the size here, we actually have two sizes available. We've got a small size and a medium size. The small is uh, 6.8 inches by 5.4 inches which in metric is 172 millimeters by 138 millimeters. And then we've got a medium size, which is eight inches by seven inches. And that is 203 millimeters by 178 millimeters. So we've got two sizes to kind of suit whatever needs you have, whether it be a bigger size for a, a bigger phone or more snacks, more good stuff like that. But as you can see, we've got a very unique zipper on this bad boy. It is a true zip zipper and it ha utilizes true zip technology which i'm not going to lie to you i've never seen a zipper like this i might be kind of overkilling with how much i'm showing you here but it is a very unique zipper and it can be hard to open so you've got this nice long zipper pull here uh, just kind of like a little nylon cord and sometimes it can be really hard to get it open because it, it kind of locks into place there i'm not sure how well you can see that but when you bring the zipper towards that, it kind of locks into place. Let me make sure that's focused. It didn't quite focus, but I think you get the, the gist of that. Kind of locks into that little uh, garage there. And getting it out of that little starting position can be difficult, um, but once you kind of start using it a fair amount, it opens up a little bit, it kind of becomes easier. And you can also lubricate the zipper. So it says on the little thing that comes with the uh, pouch and also on their site that if this zipper is not working how you think it should be or over time if you use this a bunch you're going to need to lubricate the zipper. Uh, there are a lot of different lubricants out there. They recommend using a TrueZip high performance lubricating wipe which they sell through their site uh, which you just basically kind of rub a little bit of lubricant on there and it makes it easier to open and also make sure that the zipper health is okay. We did not have to do that and I tested this at the beginning of the review period and then I also tested it at the end. It's still waterproof. I put it in the sink, just at the bottom of the sink to uh, make sure that it's still working as it should. And it did keep water out for, I think it was in there 20 minutes both times. It's at the bottom of the sink full of water. No water got inside. I just put some paper towel in there to see if it would get wet and overall no issues at all. And the zipper is obviously the main part of that. It's, it's easy to make waterproof materials, but it's hard to close them without a seam. So as you can see, one side of this thing is clear. You can really see the glare on it right now because of the light we have. So that is, you know, if you're going to be out in the sun and you want to have your phone in there and still use your phone, the glare can be pretty harsh sometimes. And on the back side, we've just got this uh, TPU material. Uh, very, I mean, it's very pleasant to, to, you know, like feel it. It's not soft by any means, but it just has a nice texture to it. I'm not sure how well you can see that texture but looks pretty nice. It does accept dirt a little bit, but that's not a huge deal. I mean, you got this thing to be rugged. So if it looks rugged, I don't think that's the end of the world. Um, but it does have radio frequency welded uh, seams, which means that these seams are um, brought together, welded with radio frequency. And you see that on a lot of TPUs. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how it works. I'm not going to pretend to be a radio frequency welding expert. I'm I'm just not, but it works. It gets the job done, so no complaints here. You've also got these two little attachment loops here, so you could attach like a lanyard to that if you wanted to, or if you wanted to, you know, you can almost like make a belt out of this with, uh, with a long strap. So these are nice. I kind of wish that one was maybe on the other side, but no complaints. It works how it should. You can also, if you want to attach it inside your backpack, like in the main compartment or something like that, you can kind of elevate it like this if you wanted to. There's a, I mean, like I said, with a carabiner on this thing, it's really endless uh, opportunity to, to do what you want with it. But I'll open this up now just to give you a little idea of how much you can open it up. I'll grab my phone as well here and slide it in to show you that you can still use it. Oh, I just opened my camera there on accident. Oh, that is perfectly illustrating one issue that I have with this pouch is that it can be hard to control your phone when it's in there especially if you like if you unlock it 
it can be hard to get because like the lock button's obviously here on my phone. It can be kind of hard to, to get there, to, to lock it, and also the volume buttons too. But you can like, you can still take a photo, like you can see, let me flip it real quick. There's our camera up there and there's our light panel. And to be honest, it really doesn't hurt the quality nearly as much as, oh, just took a screenshot on accident. This little coating does not hurt the quality nearly as much as I thought it would. Um, I used to paint houses and I literally would just throw my phone inside a plastic bag to make sure I didn't get any paint on it. And if you tried to take a photo through like, uh, like a Ziploc baggie, it, it just doesn't really work. Like you get this weird, like the light hitting it and the light kind of stays inside the material. So it just messes up the photo and adds like this weird haze. But with this, you really don't get that. It's not perfect. Like if the sun is shining on it, you're still gonna get a bit of a haze. But overall, I mean, it's, it's better than I thought it would be. And obviously you're not gonna try and take a photo. You're gonna enter in a, a photo contest through a little TPU uh, material, but it gets the job done. Like if you wanted to FaceTime somebody at the beach and you really didn't want sand or water getting in here, it does that job. And speaking of sand and water, it does have an IP67 rating. So that means it can be submerged uh, one meter for up to 30 minutes and that it is uh, locked tight from dust, sand, dirt, materials like that. But overall, I'm just I'm very happy with the simplicity of this bag. There's not much that can go wrong, which I think is why nothing does go wrong. If there were a bunch of different features and you know things that you know made this pouch better, that's more areas where things can go wrong. You've basically just got waterproof materials that are uh, welded with radio frequency and then this is true zipper. I mean, after two weeks, no issues. I took this out in the rain a few times. As I've said a few, a few times lately in Detroit, it's raining, it's snowing, it's doing everything. And I put my phone in here and I also put, um, I shoot with film cameras a lot. So I put film in here that I didn't want to get wet, put that in there, stayed dry and it stayed um, just easy to access too because it's just sitting in my backpack waiting for me when I need it. And it's like a nice added layer of protection. Like if you have a, a backpack that is semi waterproof, but not all the way, and you know you're gonna go out in the rain, and you want just that extra layer of protection, because if your clothes get wet, it's one thing, but if your phone gets wet and breaks, that's, that's a big bummer. So having that extra layer of protection just inside your bag, or your, if you have a big sling, like you could probably fit it in there as well, is nice to just have that peace of mind that your phone or whatever else, it, like your passport, you obviously want your passport to get wet, you have that little extra layer of security. And also if you're at the beach or you're somewhere where there's sand, you can put some food in here. I wouldn't you know, put like food that isn't wrapped in here, but just knowing that your food, like your wrappers and stuff aren't gonna have sand all over them is a nice little added perk for me at least. I don't like having sand on pretty much anything to be honest. But just one last look at the exterior here and just simplicity. Uh, one thing I, I didn't mention, there is the Night Eyes logo here. Uh, and some of their other uh, pouches, it's like a more of a rectangle and it's a bit bigger. I kind of like the simplicity. Like I feel like I've said simple a million times in this review. Just a nice little small logo. Don't have a logo anywhere else. And then we do have the true logo on the zipper pull there. This is plastic, so you don't have to worry about, you know, because obviously metal, most metals will rust. Um, or water can affect them if they don't rust. So plastic on the zipper there. But there you have it. The Night Eyes Runoff Waterproof Travel Pouch. Thanks for keeping it here at Pack Hacker, your guide to smarter travel. We'll see you in the next one.